If you've been following me for a little while, then you know that earlier this year, we bought a 109 year old house and that house had been neglected for a long time, including the yard. So often these days before I get to paint or really do anything else, I find myself doing things like cutting down old apple trees and fixing another broken thing somewhere. You know, this is this is almost big enough to be about three, four lots. It is. It might be four lots. I don't know. This is a lot. Our house is a lot, and Tom's house is another lot. So there's three lots in yeah. here. I almost feel like this used to be a park or something. It's, I don't know. This is what one parcel used to be back in the day. Yeah. No. Now this is like you could build six houses on this. <laughs> yeah, it's got enough trees on here, but you got a guy get in here with a good chainsaw. On. You could clear cut this thing in a day or less. Well, we don't want to clear cut it though. No. Nah. Then then everybody see everything. How'd this how'd that toilet get out here? Can I put it out here? <laughs> Outdoor plumbing. No. That, that's your plumbing, huh? Is that where you go at night, Brad? You come out here? <laughs> Use the outdoor toilet? <laughs> if you get tired of standing, you could go sit on the throne. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to sit on that, that's all right. That'll look good. Take a picture again. Yeah. <laughs> We're not climbing with it, so we don't have to be. You're funny. You see this. Wait, guys, there's something new. Maybe. Why? Is it the Bigfoot thing we're talking about? It was a joke. What? That was a joke. Oh. Then what was the thing we're talking That's a Sasquatch sticker Sasquatch. that someone else put on there. Down like that. So painting over a photo was really weird last time, but I did want to see what would happen if I did a digital underpainting, like this guy, and then if I seal it and paint over it with oil paint, will it be easier for me to interpret? Will it go faster? Um, yeah, I guess that's all of my questions that I have about it. And I don't know, this was a lot less time and stress to do an underpainting like this. And uh, we'll see what happens. Last time I had issues sealing the printed part. When I put the GAC 100 on it, it smudged really bad, so we'll see what happens. But because I've already drawn this once, I already know what this looks like. So hopefully it won't be too bad if it smudges. Since GAC 100 is self-leveling, I find that if you spray this a little bit with one of these misting bottles, that um, this will self-level a lot better and you'll get a smoother finish with no brush strokes in it. And you don't have to sand it then.
Whoops. Many years ago, when I first began painting with the aim to be an illustrator, I had done other jobs in the arts before, but I, I didn't have the ambition to be an illustrator. That had never occurred to me when I was a teenager. So I went to school for about a year to design video games. And eventually I realized that the school was a scam. Um, you can watch a video about the art school scam, uh, which is also on my YouTube channel. And after I realized that the school that I was going to was a scam, I moved back home and my grandparents had a old hay barn on their property that we renovated and that became my first art studio. And that's when my trajectory in life changed a little bit and I decided to try being an illustrator rather than doing the kind of multimedia odd jobs that I had been doing before. One of the things that I decided to do that first year that I was in my studio was to paint a lot of different subject matter, all much in the fantasy realm, but with the idea that I would have a portfolio that showed that I could paint vampires, fairies, mermaids, wizard, witches, whatever. And in my search for a wizard model, I came across a man named Marion Z. Skydancer. And he took a lot of pictures of himself as a wizard and also some pictures of other people and he posted them on DeviantArt as stock photos and they were free and he was a very flexible stock artist I would say. Sometimes stock artists um, they want to have rights to the work after it's finished that models typically don't receive when they have posed for a painting. And Marion understood how all of that works and he never tried to impose himself, as far as I know, on an artist to give him like, you know, the rights to a painting basically. <laughs> and he was really, really kind, and he was very quickly someone that I considered to be a friend. We knew each other for a very long time. It's actually, it's kind of crazy to think about now how long I knew Marion. I, I knew Marion almost as long as I have been married, which is a long time. <laughs> and Marion was always very encouraging to artists who were just starting out. I think a lot of us are always going to remember that about him. Every painting presents its own challenges. This one was challenging, well, because I was doing something different, but it was also challenging because I kept looking at it as I was working on it and thinking that I was really excited to show this one to Marion and then remembering over and over again that I won't be able to share this with Marion. Here you can see I have printed out my digital underpainting and I've put a few colors on it, but not too many because I find that I don't really like the way things look when they're colored digitally. And so I don't invest too much time in that when I do a digital mock-up before a painting. This was definitely a unique experience to work on this painting, but I'm really happy with what I created and I have decided that I will be donating the profits from selling prints of this painting and prints of some of the other paintings that I've done of Marion 
to the Disabled American Veterans Charity. And I will, I will be donating those in memory of Marion for, uh, well, forever, uh, I guess. <laughs> um, every year I'm going to bring them out and we'll have them for sale in November and December and then put them away. And then we'll just, we'll do a fundraiser basically every year, uh, for that. And my husband has suggested that I try to add a new Santa wizard every year. Um, we'll see. It was a very different experience working on this just emotionally. I realize that some of you really watch these videos for some technical explanation. So I will say that this part of the painting is dry to the touch. And so for these shafts of light, I am using a mostly dry brush. And I have some white paint with a little bit of medium. And you just want to pick an angle and make them all go that direction. When you have one light source, like, you know, the sun, a window, and so forth. Otherwise, it starts to look kind of like a disco ball, and you don't want that effect. For the fur trim, I want it to look like it's white, but I don't actually want to paint it white because it won't have any dimension if I paint it white. So I'm starting out with, uh, I think it's actually Torrit Gray, which is a whole bunch of different colors mixed together to make like a gray color. And then I'm using cool and warm grays and cool and warm whites to build up the layers of fur and give it a real, you know, furry look. <laughs> I also wanted to give Santa some cookies in his little pocket here. I mean, it's Christmas morning, so I don't think he actually eats those all night, right? That seems like that would be really bad for Santa. So instead, I imagine him coming home with sacks of cookies and pocket stuff with cookies. And so I gave him some of my childhood favorite cookies before I found out I have celiac disease and I actually shouldn't eat cookies. I gave him some gingerbread cookies, some sugar cookies, and these uh, chocolate cookies with cherries on top that my mom used to make. The background on this one is pretty simple, thankfully, because I put a lot of detail into things like the hands and the fur and his bathrobe and the cookies and stuff. So... The background is a lot of just, uh, just colors basically in a gradient. I want there to be a Christmas tree behind him. So there's a lot of light, different colors of light to work with here, but there's also the window in front of him. So it's kind of a little bit of an odd lighting situation, but thankfully Marion was a wonderful photographer and he took really great pictures with lots of different lighting sources so you could really get a good idea of what you were doing by looking at like a couple of pictures in a set. Evergreen trees are one of my favorite things to paint because they're they're pretty simple. You can just use brush textures and just kind of angle things and you get a tree with minimal effort. They're like the best tree ever. Now I'm using some really opaque, highly pigmented colors to create some little points of color that I will be turning into Christmas lights. Because I'm working wet into wet, I have to be really careful and I'm using a lot of dabbing instead of actual brush strokes because I don't want things to like meld into one another and just become mud. This is kind of hard on your brushes, but I have a lot of really cheap brushes that I keep around specifically because I am a dabber. That sounds like it's something the kids do or something, but anyway. So I have a variety of different colors. I've got some just opaque colors and then I'm using some colors that are called radiant blue, radiant green, radiant lemon. They're by Gamblin and they're just like super pigmented white with a tint of color. And then there was this red and I, this red just kept spreading. I could not believe this is a Windsor and Newton color. So wow, that was a lot of pigment in that red. <laughs> uh, and then here I am, I'm just using the same kind of technique that I did at the window, except I'm being a little bit more loose with that because 
there are lots of little lights on a Christmas tree, not just one. So it's okay if your Christmas tree light looks a little random. And then we're done. But not quite done. Now we have to scan it. So while we're waiting for it to scan, let's just do a million chores around the studio, pack orders, make prints, and bother the cat. Yeah, I'm staring at you. Honestly, my scanner is like a million years old at this point. It's been around even longer than my husband. So, it I don't know. It's so slow. I should get a new one. But it still works, so... Yep. Oh, I did finally get my drawer pulls installed. And these are the ones that I picked, in case you were just dying to know. Sometimes it's nice when the trains go by. Lately though, they've been going like 70 miles an hour, so not so nice. This one's cool though. So finally, after scanning for an entire afternoon, the next morning, it was ready to put it all together. I always scan the paintings from lots of different directions, which means I scan it upright, I turn it sideways, and I turn it upside down, and I scan it all those times, and this is why. It's like nice, when you nice and clean over here, and then it just instantly becomes a mess over here. Uh-huh, so when you lay all the scans over, the top of each other and then use something like the different layer modes in Photoshop like darken or darker layer or multiply it will eliminate the paper texture if you have scanned it from multiple different directions you're welcome it's because the light hits it from different okay. directions and you can actually completely eliminate all the high spots and the shadows in your paper texture by doing that and then you end up with a beautiful print file like that one. These prints are for sale for the rest of December, but we are closing on December 10th 
And if we ship after that, it's only because I am tired of making cookies and doing Christmas stuff. We will actually be gone too. We're going on a trip. We are going to go camping, not really camping. Like we're going to stay in a tree house. Okay. So we're going to camp in a tree house. We're going to be gone. It's a present for our son and we're going to go hiking and maybe go to the zoo and some other things. So this year, honestly, with the shipping stuff that's been going on and the weird stuff in the world, um, who, who wants to be shipping stuff the week before Christmas? You know, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing it. So yeah. Uh, and actually today is the last day for your international order. So if you're in another country, this is it. You've got to do it today. It still might not get to you. I'm not going to lie. It probably won't. Uh, so anyway, I am sorry. I know people don't like to hear that. You've been warned. Yep. I'm taking some time off and then I will be back in the new year. I will still be making videos though. Okay. Have fun. Go make some art and be good to each other. Talk to you later.